Hey guys, so this tutorial will be about the gaze component. The gaze component was already in the last version of the framework, but we redefined it a little bit. So basically now we have two separated gaze components. One is for actually triggering things. So it just sends a bool, true and false, and you can do whatever you want with that. So a lot of the other components listen to a bool and we have um, Ansgar actually will made or has already made a tutorial about the component setup and how all of this works. So this is the one version. It's here on the left side and on the right side we have the other version. This one here is with a selection button. So let me quickly show you the difference between both of them. So on the left side, for example, if I look at the door, it just triggers, opens and closes. Same is true for this button here. And all of them have in common that they just trigger between two different states. You can see this one here is like a bar progress and the other one is like a circular progress. And here on the right side, we have selection buttons. They follow the cursor here or the laser or the hand. And if I select them, the action will be triggered. And I can stop it again. Okay, let's quickly have a look on how we set this up. So actually we are going to, to create uh, our own example here. But one thing I wanted to show you is that the blueprint itself, if we open this up, it doesn't have any components. So this is really just the basic setup. We have our frame here and we have the door itself. Because the cool thing with the component approach we have is that you don't need to add it to the parent. You can just add it to the actors you actually want to have. So for example, if you look here in the details panel, you can see we have a component open. This is responsible for actually rotating the door. And all of this is defined in here. And we also have a separate tutorial about that one. So I'm not going to cover this here. And here is the component gaze trigger. And in there you can select things like when do you want to actually time out the gaze. So if the user looks away for point, uh, 0.2 seconds, it will disable. If we make this much larger, for example, like two seconds, the user can look away and it's still going to progress. So you can really adjust it to what you need in your experience here. The progress duration is how long you want this to take. So if we crank this up, it will really take a lot of time or we can make this much faster. And we have different widgets. This is really just visualization. So you can also add your own or modify those here. But we have like this circular or the bar. We can also change this to the bar linear. And in that case, I will have the other bar, not the circular, but the linear one. And yeah, really feel free to integrate your own widgets in there. So this is really more just like an inspiration on how you can visualize this. So let's create a small little example here. So I'm going to create a new blueprint class. Very simple case example. Open it up and add a static mesh. So let's use this beautiful. What's this? Oh, that's nice. Perfect. Okay, let's use this static mesh. Let's start off with a custom component. So we also use the component open. 
But first of all, let's set up this gaze trigger here. So I don't want to change anything in here, but I want to have this circular pattern. We want to trigger ourselves, and the component tag to search for is the tag of the open component. So it doesn't have one. Let's give it one. Open. Let's copy this and put it in here. So now the gaze component knows that it should also trigger itself and it searches for the tag component open. So it will trigger this component open here. The component tag to gaze it is what should actually be the actor we want to gaze it. Well, in this case, it's really just this, this cube thing here. If you only have one mesh component here, it will work automatically because we just assume, hey, this is the one you most likely want to look at. But it's always a good idea to work with, with the tags. And if you add another mesh, then you need the tag system anyway. So let's give this a simple tag called cube and also add this to the cube. And now we have defined, okay, this is the actor we actually want to look at. So even if I add another static mesh, just for demonstration purposes, like the sphere here, if I look at this, nothing should happen. But if I look at this, the gaze should actually appear. Let's try this out to see if it's working. So you can see I look at the sphere, nothing is happening. But now as soon as I look at this cube, something is happening. Well, technically nothing is happening right now because we didn't say anything in here. So let's create a new open map and don't worry, we have another tutorial only for the open components. So I quickly rushing through that. Actually, the key here is our cube. So it's the tag of this cube here. It was cube. And let's add a transform map. We want maybe, yeah, let's add the X location for something like maybe 50, like that. And now if I play, and gaze at my cube. Once the trigger is finished, you can see the cube moves in one direction and now it moves back to the, to the start position. Okay, let's create another quick example for the other gaze. So the one with the selection buttons. And I'm also going to use a static mesh here. Let's go for the wonderful, beautiful arrow here. And this time I'm going to add my gaze selection button. The component tag to gaze it. Well, we only have one static mesh here, but again, I'm going to set the tag nevertheless. Let's dismiss this one is here and set the tag. So this is set up. Identifier I don't need for now. Trigger also self is completely fine because we want to trigger itself. We would need a component tag to search for. But first of all, let's um, select one of the buttons here. I'm going with maybe the play button here. And this should already do something. So if I place this in the level and hit play and look at the arrow, you can see the play button is already appearing and it's following my mouse. So this is fine, but it's not doing anything because we haven't connected to something. That's the next step. So this is working. And here under component definition, we can really define 
what this play button should actually toggle. So the play button also has this on and off, so just the bool, and we can basically toggle anything again. We So let's go with our active component. And give it a tag, so this is our component active. Let's copy this over to our button here. So component tag to search for is on the actor itself. And the tag was copied over component active. And now I can go to the component active at event, active state changed. And I can say, if this is true, I can spawn my emitter at location. And of course, I'm going to use my explosion here. And let's also break the source info and use the referencing location. For that so this should be the position of the play button and now if i go to the arrow i get the play icon and if i press it you can see every time it is on play the explosion will spawn and on pause nothing happens okay those were two very simple examples on how you can use the gaze view. Well, the gaze view is really super simple because it just changes the, the active state. It's a bool, true or false. And in combination with something like the component active or all the other state components, you can really create anything you can think of. I can only think of the explosion thing, so sorry for that always building this explosion examples here. Um, but yeah, that is how the gaze component is working. And of course, one thing to mention, I played this in, in the desktop mode here. But of course, if you play it in VR, it is really the impact point where you look at. Okay, cool. So thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial. Bye.